GM. So, um, so it's going to be a really cool DVD. Now, another thing I would like again to share with you, and I'm going to be playing Aldo in a minute, who, who helps run some activities at, um, well, basically at, at Battersea Chess Club, a great chess club. And one activity that he was doing recently, he got Mike Basman. And if you don't know who Mike Basman is, Mike Basman plays the Grob. He 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 was a, he's a real star. He's a real star. And one thing that I found very interesting about the lecture, because I came to the lecture, is after e4, e6, d4, a Basman speciality, a Basman speciality, which I've been looking at a bit more, and I've, I've really found extremely interesting, and Aldo's also found this very interesting, I'll be playing Aldo in a minute, so maybe we'll get a chance to play this, is the ridiculous looking move here, a6. Now, I just want to show you one line, for example, which might grab your interest, because this looks crazy, yeah? The idea is to go b5 and c5, and we get out of theory very early. Now, just to show you one interesting line, because I'm going to look at this in more detail another time. Against d4 on move one, this move, I used to play an opening called the English Defence, which is e6, c4 b6 and i recommend this in my master method and after e4 which is one of the critical moves you go bishop b7 attack this pawn one of the main lines is knight c3 and now you go bishop b4 again attacking e4 very exciting opening white again defends that pawn this is a main line and now you play f5 and in this position white can't take on f5 because you take on g2 and if queen check, I have king f8. And basically, this is very safe. I win the rook here, I win a rook, and I win the game. So the main line here for white is to give a check on h5 now to make me play g6, because this is meant to weaken the dark squares. And then queen e2, defending this square. Knight f6, increasing the pressure on this square. And now bishop g5, pinning that knight. And here, a very interesting idea is pawn takes pawn. And now bishop takes pawn. And now the queen sacrifice, knight takes e4. This will become relevant in a minute. I'm just showing you some interesting ideas, unique ideas you wouldn't have seen anywhere else because these are really fresh. I'm starting to look at a bit of chess again. I've got a big chess tournament coming up, the Isle of Man, which I want to try to do well in, of course. And here, after bishop takes d8, knight takes c3. One of the main lines here is um, pawn takes c3, bishop takes c3 check, and now, because this bishop is attacking g2, king f1, black takes on a1, and this position is just completely mad. Um, I think white is probably better here, but it's very interesting. And one thing that became clear to me is that, and now we're going to see why this becomes relevant. One of the main lines in the Basman variation with a6, which looks crazy, is if white plays c4. Because look, he gets three pawns like this, and he's trying to stop you going b5. But you know what? You play b5 anyway. And now if we try to follow the similar line before, let's say white grabs this pawn. It is a pawn. We go bishop b7, so it's a bit like the English defense. Knight c3. And then we increase the pressure, bishop b4, white goes bishop d3, do you see this is very similar, we go f5 attacking, and now if white tries the same thing, and white has fallen into this trap before, we go um, g6, queen e2, can you see the only difference is there's a white pawn here, and there's black pawns on these two squares, Can you? so you can see the difference, very similar, but now, we can go knight here, and if white plays bishop g5, trying to pin, pawn takes here, bishop takes here, we can now definitely sacrifice our queen with knight takes. And after bishop takes d8, knight takes here, pawn takes here, check. The major difference now, and it's so subtle, but it's unbelievable, is that white can't play king to f1, which he wanted to play in the last line because that defends this square. But why can he not now play king to f1? So this is the first question for you guys. Why can't you play king to f1 here? What is wrong with this move? What should black now play in this position? 
to gain a, to gain a winning uh, yeah now you can go bishop a6 which um m sec mora can cannon lion and other people have said it and hello chess pats of bristol as well will be playing you tomorrow hopefully and this move wins the queen because there's no pawn on c4 which there was in the other line so in actual fact this opening which looks crazy with a6 I'm finding very interesting at the moment. So um, this is, you know, as as a totally new opening. I mean, it's probably not very good. It's probably not very good. Don't get me wrong. It's probably not an amazing, an amazing opening. But it's an interesting opening. So these are the kind of adventures that I've been I've been having recently. Uh, you know, uh, in, in my chess chess development, should we say? Um, Redback is saying. If the Basman Open is good, Simon, why don't we see it more often at professional level? Well, probably because it's not very good, as I just said. Um, but it's interesting. And, I mean, if you look at Basman's games, you, you will see that. You'll see that it leads to some very interesting positions. So, so all cool. <coughs> okay, so, well, obviously it's not, you know, it can't be great to play this move. But it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of interesting ideas. Knight c3, we go b5. And then, if something like bishop here, we go c5. And... You can get some really weird, like Sicilian positions, like this. So it, it might not be great, but it's certainly a lot of fun. So I, I, I'm going to sort of maybe try that out in, in, in some of my streams in the future. Okay, well I think Aldo is ready to play. So um, I'm going to get the game set up, and uh, we well let's just see where are you, Aldo? Let's hopefully you're here. And I'm just going to challenge him to a game now. I've totally forgotten how to do this now. Uh, <laughs> what am I doing? Custom challenge. Where's the custom challenge gone? Am I just being crazy? One minute. The board's going to look a bit funny here, but I feel like I'm doing something a bit silly. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Custom challenge. There we go. And I'm now going to try and find old uh, Aldo. Where are you, Aldo? I hope you're logged in, Aldo, whose whose name is Alakine's bum. Um, and I know there's going to be at least one idiot um, when I start, oh no, when I start playing, when I start playing against Aldo, he's going to say, why is his rating so low? Why is his rating so low? Well, the reason Aldo's rating is so low is because he doesn't play much online. But his rating in real life is... Um, is basically uh it's about 2100 so he's a very good player so let me just try to find him and uh if i can alakine's bum here we go okay and we play unrated and the time limit we we play in this uh, so aldo i hope you're ready to go is 15 minutes plus 10 seconds of move so the idea of this is to for me as a grandmaster really really explain how i think about chess and you guys at home can um well, you can basically learn some tips from me uh, to help you improve and, um, you know, learn from a grandmaster. So listen to the way I'm thinking and, and I'm basically going to explain my my thought process in, 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 in as much depth as I can. So, yeah, so he's 196 ECF. I don't know what that relates to in ELO rating, Chess Patsa UK. Hello, Chess Patsa. I think it's probably... I think it's probably about 2100 e e uh, e ELO, 2100, 2200. But as you've seen before, we have some very interesting games. Now, also, while you're here tomorrow, I'm going to be playing a simultaneous, starting two hours earlier than today, against um, the Chess Pats. So Chess Pats are UK and uh, the Chess Pats are crew. So that's going to be, it's going to be really interesting and uh, looking forward to, to that as well. Um, now, before we get going with the game, I will challenge you in a minute, Aldo. Let me just answer the questions you guys have got. Kingstar is saying I'm changing the setup. Well, I actually been filming a DVD, which I explained. And we use a little studio that I share with someone else. So this is our studio. I still haven't got it absolutely perfect for streaming yet. I have for filming. Uh, the camera sometimes goes off. I have to turn it on. And, and there's a little bit of delay with my voice, but it's, it's more professional looking than when I stream at home um fl attack hello fl attack who beat me last time in, in a simultaneous and won a dvd i have two questions for you how's it going with your birds opening project answer is slowly um i mean uh, i i've i've been working very hard at it but it's not coming along as quickly as i want i'm a bit of a perfectionist 
when I film anything, so I want to make it as good as I can. And you have a surprise for Norwegian players. I do, um, but I can't announce that yet, FL. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I I'm hoping to give you some confirmation there. So, uh, you know, we're, 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 uh, we're, I'll talk about that later on. And uh, any other any other questions before we go? Can you show us how to spot a smother, mate? Not at the moment. Let's play a game. Let's play a game. So Aldo, I'm challenging you to a game now. So if anyone says, why is his rating so low? Oh my words, just please go away. It, it's not his real rating. And I know there'll be someone coming on and go, oh look, he's playing such a patser. Um, so, okay. So I think now... We're going to have to try this opening out, aren't we? After I after I spoke about this opening, we're going to have to give it a go. We have to. So I'm going to have to try the Basman opening um, against Aldo. Um, and we're going to have to give it a go with A6. So let's see. So this is very risky. Very risky opening. And Aldo's played immediately with Bishop D3. So Aldo obviously knows quite a lot about this... Uh, um, this... This... Uh, this opening as well, Chess Pats UK, just don't even start, man. Don't even start. Okay, so the normal plan here, if they don't go C4, is to, uh, it's a bit weird that I can't highlight today. Oh, maybe it's in settings, I heard about this. Let me just see if I can, um, no, I, I need to, where's the highlights gone? Oh, I know it's in settings, but can I do that without changing the game? Well, let's see, let's see, let's see if I can do it, okay to uh let me just see so i want to i want to put on highlights there must be a way i can do this um somehow uh board and pieces maybe let's have a look highlight moves it is on that is on so that's quite weird um so i don't know why i can't highlight moves at the moment it might be a little a little for where's the game gone okay anyway we'll see so the idea of this opening is the basic play and really highlighting so annoying if I can't highlight because normally this is what I do. So you're going to have to go by the grid system. You can see along the bottom of the boards and I'll point with my mouse. Um, it's right click to draw arrows. Yeah, I know that, but it's not working. Uh, Mr. Dodgy Chess, it's not working at the moment, which is really annoying. But okay, the Bassman opening is to go B5 and to go C5. So these two moves because you want to gain space on the queen side, this area of the board and attack the center you know from the side like this and also from the side like this so i attack sort of right to left this is the idea so i'm gonna now play the next move in this opening which is this one and already i mean i, I don't think it's so bad you get a lot of uh, space you get a lot of space on the queen side okay so aldo's just playing very sensible and he's trying to keep his center in uh, intact and um it might be an it might be a new update on on chess.com you're right this this thing about uh maybe i can't i have to do it i have to change the settings for the game but as you can see i've got highlights on so i have to look at that another time it might make it a little bit it might make it uh, a little bit harder for you guys to follow my thought process but try to stay with me because we're going to get some complicated lines later on okay so now where does black put the pieces here well generally the bishop goes here and the knight goes here because I need to develop this one. So first of all, I'm going to move my knight to this square. And the point of this is if the pawn goes on, my knight comes into the center here. And then you can see one of the real points of having this pawn here. This pawn here controls C4. You see that, that square it's pointing to where my mouse is? This square here is controlled by this one. So if E5, my knight comes here. And he can't play this move, kicking my knight away. So this this is one of the, the main ideas of this. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to increase the pressure against this pawn. So we're going to go bishop b7. And we're increasing the pressure against this guy. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to attack here. And this is not really like a French defense. I'd say it's more like a Sicilian. Really, I'd say this is more of a Sicilian kind of position, personally. And now, now I have a couple of options. One of the main ideas here is to go knight c6. And then I'm just trying to think of this line I was looking at that Basma had. d5, knight d e7. Very risky way for me to play. d6, knight g6, pawn to e5. And okay, so I'm not going to do that because his pawns get to d6 and here. So if I go knight here, because often you want to take here, 
go knight here and then knight here and then try to take that bishop. But at the moment, if I play knight here, he will go pawn to here. My knight, if you follow my mouse, will have to go to this square. And then his pawn will come on here. And then my knight will have to go over here. And then it will go e5. And that position I'm not enjoying so much. So um, I'm just going to develop and put my bishop here for now. Let's try that one and see, see how this goes on. Yeah, I'm making the actual moves to try and show because I can't highlight at the moment. Uh, making my life a bit more difficult today is on oh, chess.com. Um, so, okay, well, knight c6 is, is the move I want to play. Maybe I can now go, I could also go into a, a French defense and I could play this move. I could now play d5 and, and play it like a French, which I'm quite tempted to do because I am a French defense player. Um, and or if you could, well, you have to, you have to give me an email and or, I mean, if you want a DVD off me, you have to email me and let me know what DVD you want. Otherwise I'm not going to be able to send you it. And I, I don't think I've got any emails from you. So please check, uh, please check. Um, and, and if, if you have sent it, I apologize, send it to me again, send me again so I can, uh, so, you know, so I can get it again. Okay. Right. So Aldo's playing very sensible. So what do I do here? Well, I'm now thinking if I take here, he takes here, and then I go knight to this square. How is that position then? I can also make, oh, camera's gone off. See, this is one thing um, that I need to do, change with the setup. I apologize, this sometimes happens. So I hope it doesn't happen when when I'm in time trouble, that that would be uh, that would be most of mine. Well, send me another email uh, and or Simon at gingergm.com, please. My apologies if you have sent me one. But maybe I can also go knight. Maybe I should knight here straight away now. Because actually, if he goes d5, what am I thinking of? I can take take and go knight takes d5. I didn't see this. Uh, so let's let's just go here. Let's develop my last piece. Uh, my cost 18. Thank you for subscribing. That's very kind of you. And. Um, now I've got all my pieces developed, looks all right. I'm, I'm gonna try and take this pawn and put my knight on this square. I can also take here, move my queen to this square. It looks like quite a normal position. It's quite interesting. I'm a little bit worried all about this pawn coming. Oh, no, we don't want to do that move. This pawn coming here, but I think I can just take it. If he takes back, I will just win the pawn. So I'm just gonna grab that pawn, uh, that pawn. Now I do plan come next week to, have a look at some of the, my, the favorite games from the Olympiad. Uh, Fiona is playing for Luxembourg over in the Olympiad, it, it, and I think she's doing okay. Um, so I will, I will certainly try try and have a look at that. Okay, so now the pawn's gone here, and I have to move my knight to the square. This this is clear. This is clear. The knight goes here, and I expect Aldo will try to get a knight into this square now, and. I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe I played this a little bit inaccurately. Maybe I shouldn't have moved my bishop to e7. And if I get a horrible position, one thing you often do with new openings, I find, is that when you experiment with new openings, things can often go wrong um, until you master, you know, master it a couple of times. But I think Aldo there, this can't be a bad move. But he could have also maybe taken on c5 first. If I was white, I would have gone pawn takes there. And then after bishop takes, then move the knight to this square. Okay, so what do I do now? Well, I have to try and create a weakness here. So this is what I'm going to go for. And I'm now thinking, where do I put my king later on? Do I go king side or do I go queen side? I'm, I'm thinking, you know, queen side castling is going to be much more interesting. So I might want to move my queen to this square and try to castle queen side and then attack with these kind of moves. So, um... This is certainly one thing I'm thinking of, moving my queen. At the moment, this knight coming in with a check doesn't scare me too much because I can just take it. I could also think about f5, but I don't want to play this move until my king can run away. So let's move the queen to b6 because I might even be threatening to win a pawn. And it gives me the option of putting my king on that side of the board. So as you can see, I don't think this opening is that bad. This is a main position you get. And it's very, very, very interesting. 
Um, I mean, yes, white's got the center, but this bishop has a lot of potential. I have pressure against here, and I can try to break out with f5, maybe after I put my king over here. So you get opposite side castling. It's just interesting. It's just an interesting, totally new opening. So, uh, you know, it's uh, something, something, you know, we can experiment with. Hello, Hotel Menix, who's saying warm regards to Charlie. Well, I'm not in the same house as Charlie at the moment because I'm down at the office, but thank you for the regards. Um, Tatsumaki, Tatsumaki is saying I can't play. Well, look, if your opponent plays the grob, you, you don't need to worry. Just, you know, it's not a great opening. I mean, I'm not saying this opening's fantastic, but it's interesting. And that's what we sometimes just want interesting openings. Um, Stormy Ant, why don't you play e4 if you're a tactical player? Uh, well, I do. I do play e4. I, I play. I play the English opening, d4, e4, the birds, and one b3. I normally play d4, and it. it, it you know, to be honest, uh, one d4, I actually find to be more tactical than one e4. The way I play it. If you look at the killer d4 DVD that Ginger Gem, my company's made. If you go to our shop, Killer D4 Part One and Two is 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 very very tactical. So I, I don't think you have to be. I don't think E4 is necessarily more tactical than than D4. Doesn't have to be that way. Night Night is saying, "Is Charlie okay? Charlie is is fine. Uh, uh, I'm just at the office, and Charlie is uh, basically back. Uh, Charlie's back back home at the moment. So I'm I'm doing this from a different place. Um, okay, so Aldo is now defending this pawn. So here I have a couple of interesting ideas. One of them is the castle queen side, but do I want to commit that one? Because I might still want to castle king side. The move I really want to play is f5. f5 here. Because if I can play f5, I get rid of this knight. And if he takes, I take with this pawn. And then my rook gets lined up against the king. So I'm thinking this is a typical move now. So I just have to think, if pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, this queen can't come down and check me because there's a knight here on the way. That's one thing I want to watch out for. Now I could move my knight here, but I don't think it achieves much because the bishop just goes back there. I don't see what my knight is doing on this square. That doesn't, I don't like that because my knight won't want to keep forwards. I think this is a very typical and good move because I want to take control of this square the e4 square here because then if this piece moves away on e4 my bishop becomes much stronger if my opponent takes that one i take with my pawn here because my king is going to go queen side i don't mind opening the king side and my rook is going to come straight down for the king so in actual fact i'm quite liking this position um o sonetta Oh, Sornetta, thank you for the, the, the cheers there. Very kind, the, the, two, the 200. That's very generous of you. Good way to support the stream. So I think this is all right. What do you guys think? Am I proving to you that the Basman opening is a good opening? Do I have any takers? Do any of you convince you? Whoa, that wasn't good. I just spilt Lucas Aid all over the table, so I'm gonna have to just get something to do that. One second. Lucas Aid, Lucas Aid spinach. Okay, well, I don't think it caused too much damage, so not not the end of the world. That could have been a lot worse. If you see if you see the computer sizzling and stuff, it could have been uh, it could have it could have been yeah. Oh, O Mushroomo, I like that name. That's a good name. O Mushroomo, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Very generous of you and uh yeah thanks for that that's that's cool if you want to support the stream do do subscribe to the channel uh, i'm glad you love the streams if you do love the streams subscribe okay so aldo's taken here so of course now i want to take with a pawn and this is kind of the position i was talking about my king is probably now going to go queen side because it's quite open pumpkin pip seed thank you for subscribing to the channel uh, again thank you thank you thank you and one thing I have to watch out for, like I said, is his queen getting here. But at the moment, this knight is in the way. So I don't have to worry about that. And my general plan here, 
now is to get a rook on the open file lining up against this king and at some point look at this this bishop is going to try to attack him so aldo played a good move he's trying to attack me on the queen side because you can see my king is going that way now i could just castle here and allow aldo to open up the a file because my bishop defends a8 really annoying i can't draw di diagonals but my pieces if you look at my queen you look at my bishop uh can you see the mouse even can't see the mouse clearly can you that's weird that's annoying but basically i might i might just castle queen side the other thing i can do is push on with this pawn to keep it closed and that's normally a good move so what am i going to do well i think i might castle to give myself an extra tempo an extra tempo so i might do that it's either b4 which is can't be a bad move now if b4 bishop b3 i have knight a5 b4 has got to be correct though hasn't it it's got to be correct to keep it closed where my king is um but i'm not worried about him taking on b5 because I don't really seem to have many weaknesses there. Okay, I'm going to play b4 because maybe his knight wants to move to this square. And b4 seems natural. Keep it closed where my kings probably want to go. I mean, I might even castle kingside because if I put my king on this square right in the corner, then my rook can still go here. So if you, if you can imagine my rook going here and then my king going right in the corner, that's also quite safe. I think my king is quite safe here. The only thing I'm worried about is the queen coming here and just coming down there. But maybe it's not too scary queen side okay so this was to be expected aldo wants to take this knight here so now my plan is to go here because my bishop is now defending my knight you see that and my bishop is opening up a bit more all the time so the bishop is opening up and the place i want to attack is g2 the square in front of my opponent's king is the square i want to i want to attack um castling kingside is risky martin um oh there we go i knew there'd be one prasanna i knew there'd be one someone just come in and said 791 how weak is this guy <laughs> oh my god go away man just go away you've you've come in late uh and that's just bloody typical my opponent's about 2100 he's a very good player he's very underrated at 2100 he's uh very talented player uh but i like my position here look the opening's gone well uh, at least i'm sticking to my guns here i don't actually like king f7 fl because i'd really be worried about some sacrifice with his knight coming here and then his queen coming over here this is what i've got to watch out for i don't want to allow that look i think i can just castle and put my king over here let's put my king over here because in chess you've always got to think where where your king's safe is placed and I think it must be safe over here. So Aldo's now getting ready to attack on this line. But he also maybe wants to put his knight here. But if the knight goes there, I can just go takes. Can I not? So he wants to go rook here and knight here. That makes sense. So castling is what I want to play. Let's have a look. So castles. So try to play along check king b8 knight c5 bishop takes c5 and if pawn takes queen c6 i'm gonna castle casting just has to be correct i've got a lovely piece here this piece here is my main piece as long as that piece never it cannot get attacked i can't get attacked by pawn here i can't get attacked by pawn here this is one of the good things about putting a pawn on b5 as long as this piece cannot be budged, I should be all right. Now, if the knight comes here, I'm just going to take that knight off. And again, my aim to attack is to go this way. So I have to take this knight off. This knight is too, too strong. And if pawn takes, ah, if queen c6, he has knight d4, which I did not see. I did not see that one. So I can also consider going knight takes b3 because that bishop is quite annoying. Knight takes b3, queen takes b3, 
Bishop takes here, pawn takes here, and then like queen c7 or something. Because I don't want him to take, I don't want his bishop to take this knight. So I'm going to get rid of this one first. This makes sense to me. Of course, I mean, uh, it's still a very interesting position. I, I don't know if I am better. I like my position, but it's still very, very interesting. And now after queen takes... I think I want to get rid of this knight then. Bishop takes knight. And if pawn takes, queen, queen goes somewhere like c7. And hopefully I can build up an attack there. Now other moves I do have, I could try and just leave the knight here. Maybe this is not so silly because the problem with taking his knight, the problem with taking his knight, I give the d4 square. I give him this square. And I don't I don't really want to do that. I don't I like my bishop here, don't get me wrong, but what's my best piece? My best piece is my knight in the center of the board. So I think in actual fact, I'm just gonna go rook g8. And if he takes my bishop, so what? I go queen takes. So let's go here. And now we can see that my plan is to really go here. Why do, why, I don't want to take that knight straight away. I want to keep it as an option. And this is just a very messy position. I, I think you're right. But if you're going to play openings like this, you're going to get very exciting games. Yeah? Very exciting games. Yeah. Because I've got rid of the light square bishop, a good point by Martin. How does my opponent ever get rid of this knight? This knight is so good in the middle of the board. So if he takes my bishop, I mean, I like this bishop. I like this piece because this is my piece that's trying to attack him. But his knight is very good. So I think it's more important to try and attack his king here. Um, now, if he ever plays g3, oh, that was weird. If he ever plays g3, this pawn going forwards, I can always move my f pawn there forwards. This guy can always come up to attack. So that's another idea. Um... I was wondering about this one. This is very interesting because if I take, he goes rook a1. But I don't think I'm going to get involved with this. I'm just going to go queen b5. I don't want to take that pawn because I, I give him an open file. And when he takes my bishop, I have to take my king. I want to take with my queen here. So I'm just going to move my queen to this square. And this is okay because my queen also defends the pawn here on d7. And I might better go rook c8 now next move. And eventually I will get rid of this, this piece. But the problem now is if I ever go bishop takes knight, he will go rook takes, and then my queen is uh, is bad. But maybe I'm threatening to move my knight now, like knight c3. What about that? Knight c3. And then bishop takes knight there. So he has to be a little bit careful now. Now time's getting a little bit shorter as well. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's getting a little bit shorter. I have to play... A little bit quicker now in very interesting game uh, but I still think this has been quite a successful opening and it was it's was funny because it was Aldo who told me about this opening it, it was it, it was Aldo out the person I'm playing here arranged Basman to do the simul uh, and he told me about this opening and I think I'm absolutely okay okay so so right now do okay if I move my knight now Aldo will go rook takes here. So I've got to be a little bit careful. I'm thinking just rook c8. I'm thinking rook c8. But I can also... I can also try doubling over here. And I can... So what do I play? Let's let's have a think. Rook c8 looks natural. And then he'll go rook c1. And... Very interesting still there. Rook c8, rook c1, bishop takes, rook takes. And then do I have queen e2? Because now my queen defends this pawn here, I can move this rook because I'm not worried about knight takes here. And the thing is, this piece is so strong. It's such a good knight. So I think I'm just going to go here. Because maybe I, maybe I, you know, I think at some point I want to take this. Now I could have moved my knight. But I didn't want to allow his rook takes pawn. And my knight is very good. The threat is stronger than the execution. And I don't want to move my knight away from protecting b4. Because at the moment, my knight protects that pawn. Now, why, why do I want to move my knight unless I have a very good reason? I was even thinking, guys, about rook takes g2 there. King takes g2. 
rook on it and then something like knight check or, or rook check but I, I don't think it was working i don't think it was working and if i go knight takes e3 and bishop d5 could i play that uh, i didn't see that i didn't see that um but i think he goes rook takes b4 yeah knight takes e3 rook takes b4 and at the moment this piece is just i mean why i've got i mean i've got a very simple plan swap off my opponent's good pieces Swap off my opponent's good pieces and leave myself with my good pieces. So I want to go bishop takes here. That knight is his one annoying piece. So let's have a look. Rook c1, bishop takes, rook takes, maybe rook. Oh, no, no. Oh, God. Nearly, I nearly pre moved. Rook takes, rook takes, queen e2. I think I'm doing very well there. Very, very, very well very well i i mean that line there i mean unless moving my knight wins somehow i don't want to move my knight i don't want to move that knight that knight is too strong it's it's the best piece on the board fl attack you're completely correct and that is one of the ideas of this opening on move if we go all the way back by putting a pawn on this square here later on my opponent can't go c4 so this square becomes really good for my knight and my knight will always remain there so it's very interesting so what is Aldo going to do here i think i think he's in, in it certainly in a worse position here certainly i'm better i mean other things i can do to improve my position well mainly just bishop takes knight this is my big move i could even be threatening d6 now this pawn here because if, if his knight moves i win this rook i win this rook so d6 might even be stronger this might be my major threat knight takes bishop rook takes rook i win the i win maybe a whole rook so in actual fact maybe this is just really bad for for aldo uh this position quite possibly quite possibly a very very bad position um okay so aldo's moved the rook back because he might want to stop my queen coming in and now the rook is on a less active square so i can really start to think of playing aggressively here i oh, now i could go bishop takes knight but then pawn takes should be some tactics here i'm just gonna have to think a little bit quicker now uh bishop takes pawn takes can i then do i then have some tactics with this knight knight here i don't know i don't want to move this knight unless it's really strong now he's going to go rook here but then i always take there no i could double up on the c file i'm getting a bit short of time so i can still mess this game up now if i move my knight i don't see why i want to move that unless i have a very good reason um can i play f5 f5 f4 seems to be a good plan but if i go f5 knight here then i take that knight i like this move this improves my position because i can start using my pawn to come forward so what about if i move this one then rook here takes i'm gonna have to make a move so i'm gonna have to go for this one i don't know if that's best i don't know if that's best but i i, I kind of like this um because getting my pawn to f4 it forces this bishop to go to a bad square and also when he plays g3 I can play f4 and that tries to open up his king okay so he's moved the rook here and now i think i just go bishop takes knight rook takes rook takes rook takes and queen into this square so let's go for that so now but then he he might want to put his knight here though so is he threatening anything i don't think he is so what about if i go f4 first should we play this first f4 Let's play this first, yeah? Am I missing? There's no threats. Let's play this first. Let's play this first. This 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 gains a bit of space. If bishop takes, because then I have the queen coming into e2. If he puts his bishop on d2, I have this square for the queen. At the moment, the rook is, okay, so now I have this square. So bishop takes, pawn takes. I really want to put my queen into the square. Do I have knight e3? Do I have knight e3? I think I need to get rid of this knight now. Okay, I'm going to have to move a bit quicker because my time is uh, my time is ticking down. Let's get rid of that knight. 
And the point is now this square is where my queen is heading. And, and I'm going to try, and again, I always said it's about the pawn in front of his king. That's where I'm aiming to attack. Um, and I, I understand what Plocrux is saying, that the queen wants to be on the king's side. Yeah, I'm hoping to get it over there eventually. Hello, Chess Pats of Wiltshire. Looking forward to playing you tomorrow. Um, should be fun. So pawn takes. Do I have knight e3? Do I have this move? Pawn takes. Bishop takes f3. At some point, there's got to be a tactic. There's got to be a tactic. That's got to be a tactic. Okay, pawn takes. Now, I could play positionally and just go pawn here. Stopping this knight coming in, but... If he goes here, rook takes, not scared. If I go queen e2, rook e1, rook takes here, check. God, this is getting complicated. I feel there must be something very strong here. Let me just, I'm going to, uh, really, really strong, really, really strong. I feel I have a very strong move somewhere here. Knight here, knight e2. Pawn takes, or knight here, bishop takes. Okay. Now, queen here. Let's. Oh, he has bishop takes here, check. Knight takes, rook takes here. I'll get a lot of pieces. Queen e2 is so interesting. Queen e2. So interesting. But what about something like bishop here? Then a queen e4. So interesting. Queen here, rook e1. And then knight to e3. Rook takes check. Here, bishop takes f3. It's so interesting, guys, this position. I mean, I'm running a bit short time, so this is the one thing I'm worried about. Queen e2, rook e1. Rook takes here, king takes. And then knight e3 check is another line. I think he has to go queen takes e3. So I'm just... Okay. So queen e2, rook e1, rook takes here, king takes. Knight e3 check, queen takes e3. Bishop takes here check. And if queen takes, rook g8 check. I think, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I'm so tempting. I'm so tempting. I mean, also, this is quite interesting. Rook takes g2 now. I think I need my queen on a better square. So what about I go queen c6 as well? Queen c6 is quite interesting. If he moves his knight, rook takes g2. So it's either queen to this square or queen to this square. Now, queen to e2. I've just got to calculate this again. Rook e1, the only move I'm worried about. Because if he takes, 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 takes. Okay, got to move quick. Queen here, rook e1. Check. King takes. Check. King to h3 or here. King to h3. Let's go this one. This, look, this looks most interesting, but it might be bad. It might be bad. Queen c6 was a much safer move. Queen to this square was much safer. I, I don't know. This one, maybe c6 is a really good move for my opponent now. Uh, queen c6 was much better. Queen c I'm really worried about c, uh, c6 now. I think I've just blundered. I think c6 is a really good move. I've thrown this away, actually. Eurolo Gun, thank you for subscribing. If c6, well, I can go bishop takes c6. Maybe it's okay, but I think queen c6 was much safer. Get my queen around like that. I could have gone queen here, and then I could have played e5, and my queen could have gone over there. I mean, queen c6 was probably, you know, probably, probably the way to play. Probably a way to play. This queen e2, it's a bit too risky. If bishop f4, I go knight takes f4, rook takes e2, knight takes e2 check, and knight takes c1. I basically, I win so many pieces there. It's, it's too many pieces. But I'm worried about c6. This move to me feels right. 
c6. Now let's just have a look at that. Then I go rook takes c6, bishop takes here. Maybe it's okay. Here, rook takes c6, rook takes. Okay, maybe I don't panic, just go rook takes c6. c6, rook takes c6. Yeah, okay, actually maybe c6, I'm just getting, I'm getting panicked about anything. If he ever goes here, then surely I have rook takes g2. Now my tactical idea here is if rook e1, I want to play rook takes g2 check. But I also have rook e1, knight e3. Very, very exciting position this. But then queen takes e3. So rook e1, rook takes g2, king takes g2, rook g8 check. King to h3, queen takes f2. And then I'm threatening the amazing move, rook f2. Even though I'm a rook down, I've got a big, big, big check here. But yeah, maybe c6. c6 still worries me, as someone is saying. c6 is a worrying move. But let's have a look. c6, rook takes c6. If queen takes d5 then... Pawn takes d5. Okay, so he's gone here. Now this move. I want to play knight here now. Okay, let's. My time though, my time's so bad. And if I take, take, check. King h1. Knight e3. Takes, takes, check, king here. Queen e4. Takes, takes, check, king here. Knight e3. Now if I go knight e3 now, what's this position like? Knight e3, rook takes, check, king h1. I have no time, so I'm going to have to. I can even go queen b5 now again. The camera's gone off. Typical. Bloody camera's gone off. Oh no, just what I said would happen. <laughs> no. What are you doing to this to me? Ah, oh, that was just so typical, guys. What's so typical? Now, I could have actually there, I'm trying to play for a bit of uh, magic here, but actually queen going back to b5 there may have just won because the bishop was pinned. I could have just, but this one is so interesting. It's so interesting, how can I refuse this? And the idea is, if king takes, rook g8 check, and I'm going all in for the attack. King here, knight to e3, rook takes here, bishop takes there, checkmate. I mean, what is this about? This is, this is crazy. That was, that, was, that was perfect timing, wasn't it? The camera bloody goes off. Typical, typical. <laughs> I need to work out what's going on with this camera, you know. I need to... Uh... Okay, well, we're all in now. We're all in with the attack. So, okay, so we've gone here. I didn't even see that one. So queen e4 looks like the sensible move, and I'm running out of time. Ah, uh, do I have anything better? Oh, I can't see. This, this, this must be right. Now c6 is is, 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 a, is is the move I'm worried about. c6. Maybe just pawn takes c6 maybe. c6 is the move I'm always worried about. Maybe rook takes, okay, bloody played it as well. Good move Aldo. Jesus, time. Ah, uh, I, I, I needed another minute in this position. I needed another minute. In this incredibly complex position. I still don't know what's going on, but I, I rushed that move a little bit. Uh, I rushed that a little bit here. Um, fingers crossed here. Because that was a really good move because he's blocked my bishop out. So king takes here, check. Okay, again, he's playing so quick. Knight e3 is what I want to play. If you want to play something, play it. 
Okay, this is really interesting, yeah? This is this is what I wanted to play to open up the line. I did say something was gonna happen on G2 in these positions, but this is what I wanted to play. Now, I could have gone Queen G6, Knight H4, C5 maybe, but this is this is all in. This is all in chess. And you can see Aldo's a very good player. He's playing, he's playing very good defensively. He could have messed up, but this position, I'm trying to get the queen. The queen is blocked towards the knight. So I'm trying to put this in his pipe and make him smoke it. Maybe I've got c5 coming, opening this up. So he's got to take. Okay, so now I take here. Do I have anything better? No, this one's good. And if he takes my rook, I have c6 maybe or even pawn e2 pawn e2 pawn e2 and now he's short time as well so this is okay check bishop here e2 looks best no i have also pawn here but let's keep this pawn got to move quick also c5 was very interesting i don't know if c5 was better Maybe c5 was a better move. Queen takes here, queen takes c2. But this is, I'm only a piece down, but I'm attacking. I'm threatening to go here, knight. Okay, now c5, surely. But maybe I messed this up a bit. Ah. Ah, I should have played c5, last move. Very silly of me. Now queen e3, and he's defending brilliantly at the moment. I have queen d5, very complicated position. I think I should have played c5 last move though. I think that would have been winning. This is, this is, this is unclear. Check and rook f8, let's try that. Check, get his bishop out of the way, only move then rook f8 and I attack here. And if I can win the knight, I'm probably winning. Very exciting game. I couldn't go rook f8 straight away because the bishop would have taken my rook. But now, how does he defend this one? He can't. So now he has to swap the queens off, but this is really bad for him. So I'll take here and I get a very good ending because my pawn on e2 is now, look at that pawn. That pawn is a winning pawn. And I can probably move my rook down here. What an exciting game, yeah? What an exciting game, guys, this was. This was a... Can I say brilliant game? Can I, can I, am I allowed to say I played brilliantly? <laughs> um, I don't know, it was a lot of fun, but I think he, I think he's in trouble now. He has to try to go bishop here, bishop here, but he, he's lost, it's completely, it's resignable. Wow, that was a game and a half, boys and girls, wasn't it? <laughs> um, well, thank you for the shout out, Kos, Kostas. Uh, there was some good fun attacks going on there. Um, that was that was very interesting. And of course, how is he? How is he such a low rating? Because he's not. He's 2100, 2200 rating. But we got to look at that game with a computer because that game, that game was that game was really really exciting. Yeah. And uh, I told you this opening. It, it's better than it looks. It's better than it looks. I mean, if you can beat 2100, 2200 with some attacks like this, then. But I'm sure we both missed some good moves in such a tactical position in such a tactical position that there's there's going to be we're going to miss quite a lot definitely so we'll, we'll have a look uh plo crux wait is it lucas aid yeah it's lucas aid um at, uh, I'm, I'm i'm drinking at the moment but i do like iron brew but you can't really get iron brew in england a lot i love iron brew you know being a being a ginger scottish guy Okay, so very exciting game. Thank you for the, the good game, Aldo. That was that was that was really good, exciting game. I think from both of us, we probably both missed wins. Let's go and have a look at the computer. I'm really interested to see what the computer is going to say about this. Um, yeah, I'm getting ready for the Isle of Man. Yeah, this is where I'm playing next. Uh, per Zizzles, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you want to support the stream, do do subscribe. So let's have a look at it with a computer. I mean, what the hell was that game all about, eh? So I'm just gonna have to adjust the board a little bit. So you, oh, you can kind of see that, can't you? But let's let's make it a bit clearer. Um, and well, I, I, that was that was that was a lot of fun. 
that was a lot of fun but i don't know if it was all sound i think i i think i missed some better moves uh i think queen c6 i should have played queen e2 was not right and i think uh aldo we both i'm sure we both missed some moves there let's just put it that way so i'm just setting the board up and let's now let's now just get the computer evaluation we won't spend forever looking at this we can have a little bit of a look at it and let's get that computer evaluation at the top so everyone can see it everyone can see that okay good there we go so we can see what we missed so let's have a look very interesting okay now um well this opening a6 I, i'll be i told you it's very interesting i mean the idea is to basically do quite similar to what i what i did in the game I was talking about what happens if white plays c4. You can play this crazy gambit line, b5. You know, it's uh, uh, definitely an option. And look at the computer. The computer thinks it's a load of rubbish, this opening, which I'm not surprised about. I'm not surprised. But we don't always have to believe in the computer in the opening. We've got to go our own way. So bishop d3 played. And now, of course, b5. c3. And the computer thinks white's already a pawn up. C5, this is the idea, you know, we, we, we attack the center from the sides. Okay, knight f3, and now knight to f6. And one of the main ideas of having a pawn on this square, oh, I can highlight again now, thank God for that, is to control c4. So if he goes e5, the knight comes here, and this is what happened in the game. And how good was the knight in the game on that square? How good was that? Um, and the point now is if c4, well, I have a pawn here, so I can keep my knight on this square by playing this. Look, my knight stays there. Stays on that square. Um, it is interesting that the, the computer doesn't want to take the pawn, Mary, uh, uh, Martin. I, I've checked that line, and actually, this is, this is a great surprise weapon. I mean, you can't play this opening all the time. Uh, but as a surprise, I, I think it's it, it's very possible. Okay, so the computer thinks e5 is all right, but okay, we'll see. Castles can't be bad. Bishop b7 can't be bad. Rook e1 can't be bad. And now I think my next move is maybe a mistake. I, I think I, I, I didn't like my next move because I think I want to take here in one move. I think I probably should. You can always play a French defense here. If I want to, if I want to play a French, I can go this move, and after here, I can either put the knight here or the knight here, and this can't be so bad. This can't be so bad, but it's it's probably a slightly worse French. I can see lovely, lovely comments from Dispenser. Obviously, having a very bad day. Feel sorry for you, son. Hope your life gets better. You know, all I can do is. Uh, Hope that people's lives get better sometimes and shed a little tear for them. So anyway, bishop e7, I don't like. So what should I do here? Well, I probably, sh I probably, if I want to keep it flexible, maybe I should take on, on this, this square here and play like this. Can I do this and now go knight here? Well, what about knight here straight away? Why didn't I go knight here immediately? Maybe, ah, because then he goes d5. Then he plays this move. Okay. So, um, well, let's see what happened. Bishop e7, knight bd2, knight here. Now, I think my opponent, Aldo, played actually, okay, this is all right. And it looks like the computer really doesn't like my position. And um, here, as I said, I think I played it slightly wrong because the pawn takes here. I'm still learning this opening. And after bishop takes this kind of stuff, certainly looks a bit scary for me, yeah? Certainly looks a bit scary certainly looks scary i don't know about this i can go bishop here and then bishop g5 can i play f6 is this playable what's this position like here is this so bad for me the computer thinks this position is terrible for me but is it what if i move my queen again queen b6 and try to castle was this really so bad it's not so bad i don't believe the computer i don't believe the computer at all okay anyway let's go on because it got fun later on so let's have a look knight e4 and of course, now I gain a little tempo, queen b6, and I think this is all right, this is okay. Because as soon as I get f5 in, I actually start to like my position. And again, the computer still, um, this, the computer still doesn't like my position, but now I gain control. Look, it thinks I'm in a lot of trouble here. 
It's funny. It's funny. The computer doesn't understand, I don't think. But if he moves the knight, then the computer thinks I'm better. So where does he move the knight? If he goes knight here, now I'm better because I have this lovely control of the light squares. Maybe just knight here. And it's all about this square here. This square, this square is an incredible, um, incredible square. So that's why he has to take. And now taking here, and I have a nice structure and a beautiful knight. So I, I think the computer's wrong here. If the computer's best move is G3, how can that be scary? I think black is absolutely fine. I disagree with the computer. So A4 looks normal. And now B4, keeping it closed. Bishop B3, I can't allow him to take there. So I have to try to keep a piece on that square. That's important. Because if you imagine I, I castle and I move a pawn to this square, this is horrible for me. Because my bishop is trapped. I can never attack g2 now. This is something I need to avoid. So that's why uh, knight to a5 is a lot better. Because if he takes now, I take with a bishop. And now my bishop is a really good piece. And only here does the computer think that black's better now. So let's keep going. So bishop e3. And now, of course, castling. If I can castle, I'll castle. And rook c look out, look out. Okay, watch the computer. Look how quickly it goes down. It, to start with, it thought it was plus one. But now it's slowly going, oh, actually, I think black's okay. And now it's going up again. <laughs> okay. Now check. Obviously king here. And I think knight c5. Oh, the computer thinks bishop takes d5. Oh, that's interesting. But okay, it's nothing too well. Knight here, and now we get rid of the bishop because now my knight is fantastic. Queen here, and again, this knight can never be moved now. So I think I'm better here. I think I, look, it says it's a, a draw. I mean, what what the hell does what the hell does this computer mean? But this knight can never. This knight is going to stay there forever. So how, how I, I can only be better, yeah? I can only be better here. Uh, I can only be better. So. Uh, rook g8 and actually we actually the way the game went we even we kind of we kind of uh, predicted didn't we uh, a checkmate on g2 because i've got everything lined up towards g2 so um a5 okay and now this was quite clever now the computer says again that i should take this pawn but i, I think this messes up my coordination it's a bit greedy we don't need to play like computers and the, the reason I like queen b5 is if knight takes here, my queen can still take it. And okay, I lose my great bishop, but, but my opponent Aldo loses the great knight. And I'm still looking towards this square. I've still got some kind of tactical ideas here. And again, now look, it thinks black's better. So um, Aldo now played rook c4. And this is where a lot of you guys were, were wondering about knight takes e3. And in actual fact, maybe I could have played it here. But um, the thing that I was thinking is, why do I want to move this knight? I was, I was maybe playing a little bit lazily, uh, but you know it's quite hard to to see everything when when you're commentating like this. But maybe I can take this in. Let's have a look. So take here, and if rook takes b4, oh oh look at this, oh oh this is beautiful tactics. Ah oh, ah oh, this is such a nice win. I was worried about this move, but look at this. This is fantastic. Rook takes here, check. Only one move, king here. And now, now, it, and now it might look like I'm in trouble because if I move my queen, rook takes b7, but I don't move my queen. Look at this move. This is fantastic. I mean, if I go bishop takes f3, my opponent takes here with check. So what do I do here? I get rid of the rook on this square. Rook here, check. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant and and it's checkmate i mean if king takes we now play check here fantastic and when the king comes back we can now take here because i have no rook on g2 and that's checkmate what an amazing line and the other variation is if, if rook takes here well i think this is now quite simple just take here he has to play rook g2 so rook g2 and my queen is still pinned so i say simple it's actually not that simple but we take here king here and now the brilliant move bishop b7 because he can't take the queen with check and when he does this this is actually checkmate stunning 
Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning variation that one. Uh, but I think you can see why I missed that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a world champion by any means. <laughs> um, an amazing line. Um, I probably would see that in a lot. I'd hope to see that in a tournament like the Isle of Man. But okay, I mean, Rook C8 looked very natural. It's a good positional move, and I, I and you can see from the evaluation here, I'm still a lot better. So uh, Rook C2. And now, well, I could have taken here, but I like my plan. F5 looks good. Let's let's bring another another thing into the attack. And this also secured E3. So I'm certainly better here. Rook C1 looks normal. So F4 might be better moves, but I like this. Bishop D2. And it's funny here that the computer actually it doesn't think White's in so much trouble. Now, the first the move I thought might be the best here is this one. Was there a problem? Oh, knight to E5. See, I didn't think knight e5 was possible because I thought I could go rook takes g2. Ah, you got it wrong, computer. You got it wrong. And maybe this is just a draw. And the idea here is if king takes knight e3 and we have a double check with the knight and the queen uh, and next move my queen's coming to this square with checkmate. So white is forced in this position to go king here. And now... It's just saying queen b5, so I don't have a winning move here. That's annoying. That's annoying. But okay. Okay. It's interesting. So what about the move I played? Now the move I played, well, I took this I took this knight off because this knight's a good piece. My opponent took with a pawn. Oh, it was here. It was here I was going to go queen here, wasn't it? This is where I wanted to play this move. But it's, oh, it still thinks knight d4 now. It says knight d4 is much better for white. But I was thinking I could go rook takes g2 again. Is this not good? And now king f1. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Computer chess here. Yeah? Computer chess. Very strange. It's a very compl complex position. But I played queen e2. And queen e2, I was very interested. Now, the way I was thinking, I'll show you some of the lines that I was thinking of. I was thinking rook e1 is critical, but then I, I, I came to the conclusion that I had a winning attack here. And actually here, you can see it thinks I'm still better. Now, if rook e1, you know what it's going to do here? Well, I was even going to play knight e3, but I was worried about queen takes e3. The move I really wanted to play was this one. And I don't know, is this working? Let's have a look. This, this was a very fun move. Now, king takes, rook here check. And the point now is that if king to this square, which I think most humans would play, not computers, but humans, I had this amazing move now, knight to e3. Fantastic move. And if he goes rook, rook takes queen, bishop takes here, checkmate. So th this is what my my mind was, was thinking during the game. Checkmate. But apparently the computer can defend with here. But I thought queen takes f2 would now, would now give me a winning attack because my threat is rook to g3. And he can't win my queen by moving this one, because if he does go check, I go checkmate. <laughs> so how does he defend after queen f2? And my main move is rook to this square. Look at this line. It's changed its mind again. The computer can't understand this. The compute. The only move is apparently bishop takes b4. I mean, come on. This is a fantastic variation. And after rook g3, king h4. I mean, this is mind-blowing stuff. Absolutely mind-blowing. And it actually thinks it's about even here, yeah? I mean, what the hell is that all about? I mean, what is this? This is just completely crazy. It thinks it's about even position. This is, this is why chess is such a beautiful game, yeah? I mean, you, you get lines like this. You get lines like this. And... Um, what else can I do here? Can I do anything else? No, I have to go rook g3. And the point is he can't take on g3 because queen takes his checkmate. And you can see how useful this attacking pawn is. But that line um, was one line I was thinking of. Now, if I had more time after rook e1 uh, in the position, the other move I wanted to play was knight e3 straight away. We've seen this tactical idea quite often. Uh, and the point here is like before, if rook takes g2... I can now play an amazing idea. And I saw this line now. I've given up a queen and now I give up a rook. Check, he has to go here. My knight defends the rook and now I go here.
brilliant, absolutely brilliant variation again. He only has one move, the knight is pinned. So I give up a rook and a queen, but now I go check, and you can see the lines are similar to before. I either take the knight with checkmate, or I take the knight there with checkmate. Uh, amazing variations. But the move I wasn't sure about in this position was after knight to e3, which um, I wasn't sure what happens if queen takes, but maybe I just go queen takes f3 here, keep it simple. Oh no, the computer gives pawn takes pawn, rook takes here, ah, I just go, I just go pawn takes d2 and I'm winning. I'm winning because again, I have these threats towards this square. Fascinating. So what actually happened was, let's have a look, bishop takes b4, releasing the rook here. And, and like I said, queen b5 might be uh, the best move here when, I, when I'm probably doing very well. It's incredibly complicated, but who can resist rook takes g2? I mean, this was so much fun. Yeah, how can I resist this move? And now the point is if king takes g2, rook g8 is going to lead to checkmate. Because if king to h1, it's the same tactical idea as before. And the tactical idea is to block the queen's defense of the knight. And the way I block the queen's defense of the knight is by going knight to e3, this very important move. And if rook takes here, this again is checkmate. And I think I'm just winning here because there's nothing, nothing my opponent can do. If queen takes e3, I can even play queen takes f3. Checkmate next move. Crazy. So um, that's why Aldo had to play king to g1 here. And this is where I was very short of time. And well, queen to e4 is, the, is, is one of the top moves. I wanted to keep my queen nearer to his king. And look, I've got everything lined up here. Unbelievable that it thinks it's a draw. Now Aldo played a very good defensive move. This was great, c6. And here I think we started to blunder. This is a really good move because it blocks the bishop. Well, actually, I played the top move. I couldn't work out what was best, but I played the top move. And now the check is the top move. Aldo playing well. I have to move my king. Top move. And now here, rookie one is a blunder from Aldo because of my next move, knight to e3. And this move I'm expecting missed and I'm blocking the queen to here. And now I think this is winning, but I also messed it up. Aldo's in the chat. So everyone congratulate Aldo um, on that game because it was very entertaining. And, and he, he, he certainly, well, maybe, maybe in actual fact, I don't think he was ever winning. Was he, was, was Aldo ever winning? Uh, it was so complex, but Aldo is in the chat. So, well, thank you for the game, Aldo. We, we always have exciting games, don't we? And, well, he has to play rook takes at e3. Now, I did a little blunder in a minute. As soon as I played it, I, I, I realized I blundered. But this should be winning. Even though I'm a piece down here, I, I played e2. And I, as soon as I played e2, I was like, why did I play that move? Had I gone c5 here, I'm completely winning. Because the point is, if queen takes e3, guarding the knight, I just take the rook. And I take the rook and uh, I'm the exchange up with an attack. Uh, exchange up with the attack here. Well, I wasn't sure, Aldo. Aldo says he never was winning. I, I, don't, I didn't know. I thought it's such a complicated position. I thought maybe there's some tactic that we both missed. I, I don't know. It's so, so, uh, uh, and that's quite a funny comment by the, the King's Gambit. <laughs> yeah, of course, Aldo's rating is not correct, as we talked about. But anyway, E2 is probably still winning. Uh, let's have a look. Rook C1, and it's still winning, actually. C5, and... Um, yeah, this is actually just still winning, according to computer. Now, what about queen e3? That's the one move I, I, I wasn't sure about. Ah, oh, just queen g4 check, bishop g3, and now rook f8 again. And this piece is this piece is uh, always the problem. And uh, yeah, this this is this is uh, this is bad. And if and in the game, it basically continued with the same idea. I've got to get the bishop away from f8, so my rook can go to that square. So we go rook g8 check, and then we go rook f8. And here it's, it's quite easily winning because I get my piece up back. Uh, and the pawn's up and I keep my pawn in e2. So after queen e3, we just go for the ending. And now rook d8. And it's really hard to stop this one. The only way Aldo could have stopped this one was bishop to this square. So the bishop can come back here. But then the move I was going to play was rook to d5. And this is trying to either kick the bishop away from this diagonal or kick the bishop away from the defense here. So if it goes to c3, then this is checkmate. And if it goes 
anywhere else like back then I come to d1 uh, and, and of course there's no bishop c3 move anymore so a fascinating fascinating game that one and a fascinating opening as well and uh, you know again thank you to my opponent Aldo for playing this and uh, the interesting thing is we were talking about this a6 move and who told me about this move well it was really a combination of uh, Michael Basman and Aldo who arranged Michael Basman to come and do a talk so uh, um, I have to say thank you to both of them and uh, you know like we say I mean if you look at the computer's evaluation in the opening it doesn't like it you know it gives it as plus one for white and it probably is a lot better for white this evening but also it probably the computer probably gives a lot of variation as plus one and, and this 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 is just very interesting it's a very interesting opening don't always don't always listen to the computers go your own way you have to try to be imaginative yourself as well I mean computers can't always tell you what to do Morpheus